Hello. I'm going to do a video here and I'll walk around on my motorcycle that's for sale. It's a 2002 Kawasaki KL250 Super Sherpa. KL250 is an air-cooled, single-cylinder engine, chain-drive, dual-sport motorcycle. You can see I've got knobby tires on the front and back and the high supermoto type fender. Um, the, I do have the lower fender, the one that's sits closer to the tire, the stock fender, but it will not fit with knobbies, so I, I took it off, of course. And let's do a quick walk around here and show you some things that you may be interested in if you're uh, looking to buy this bike. We'll start at the very front, and again, it's got knobbies on them. You can see really good tread here on the knobbies. This brakes front and rear. This brakes are in really good shape. Uh, it's hard to get a picture of the pads, but they're in really, really good shape. Supermoto fender, and it's just an off-color green from their stock darker green here. Um, this particular is the only one that was available. It's got hand guards on it, aluminum frame that goes around them. You can see in here, um, they protect the, the shift the levers. So if you do, or when you do dump over, nothing gets broken here. Little mud flap just on the fender to help keep some of the mud off of it. It's just some homemade stuff I put on here. Stock skid guard under the bottom. Um, it's not super thin. I mean, not super thick, but it does do its job enough to keep the heavy stuff from doing any damage. This aluminum plate here, I made it specifically for here. If you look, and hopefully this shows up, the wire for the stator is right here. And it is subject to catch a tree limb or branch or something and get yanked out if you're in some really gnarly stuff. So I made this aluminum bracket here just to protect that wire. Oversized foot pegs, uh, really good if you, if you do a lot of standing, a lot more comfortable than the, the stock ones, which are only about half as wide and maybe a third as long. So the stock ones are about that size there. I do have them if you care to put them on. Uh, chain drive, as mentioned, uh, the front sprocket, which is back here, the rear sprocket, and the chain were all put on new less than 500 miles ago. Uh, I don't know the exact number of miles I've ridden with it, but it hasn't been very many. Um, this piece here is a homemade piece out of a uh, plastic-type nylon cutting board. The original piece was broke off and it was unavailable from Kawasaki. So this is just a homemade piece, but it's cut out in basically the same shape. And it just helps keep tree limbs and stuff from getting in that sprocket and, uh, and rolling the chain off. Um, just some reflective tape here that I put on and it's just been barked up from good dual sport riding. It does come with a helmet holder, stock, key to light with the ignition and the fuel. Um, Agro supply type tool tube here, and I've got it full of patch kits, tire irons, and stuff like that. Um, may or may not go with the sale. It just depends. But the tool tube will come with the bike. Uh, it comes with a, the stock tool tube is about this big and about that big around. It's pretty small. This one's probably four times bigger than the tool tube that comes with it. It does have the tool kit, the stock tool kit. That come with the bike from the fact that it does have it, it's in this tube. A homemade rack uh, is made out of 3 8 inch Schedule 40 black pipe. I made it and heated and bent this with a conduit bender. It's bolted to the frame um, in, the, in holes. I think they were handrails or hand grips or something here and here. And I just reused those same holes to, to uh, threaded holes to, to hold this this raw rack. Um, I built these little U things here so when you dump over you don't damage tail lights. You can see it comes with a uh, an Apache which is Harbor Freight brand of like a Pelican case. It is watertight. The case is bolted to the um, to the rack but it, it comes off. Um, it takes a couple minutes to get it off. With the sale will come a brand new front and rear tube here. You'll also get the owner's manual. Um, this is a, a slime 
air compressor. May or may not come with a sale. Depends on what we can work out. I also have the Kawasaki service manual back there on my shelf. But the service manual will come with the bike as well. Um, under the license plate frame here, uh, it's called a key. It flips up. So you can put your registration and stuff in here, and it is watertight. I think I got this from Air Stitch. Uh, Super Sherpers have stainless steel exhaust, so don't have to worry about anything rusting there. Back tires, you can see nice, nice knob is on here, plenty of rubber, and uh, disc brakes as well. And again, just some more reflective tape that's been blocked up from, from riding. Uh, got it sitting on a, my stand here, just a little bit easier to film and see a little better. This is really the only bad spot here, I'll call it, that's discolored with all of the, the factory plastics. And I think it's just from a stress from bolt had been over tightened or something, but it's not cracked. It's just discolored here. You can see this one is not. I don't know why this one here is, I couldn't tell you. Uh, I will say it has a brand new battery. I just put a battery in it two days ago on April the 5th. I think, or six, whatever today is, two days ago, April 5th, I think, when I put a brand new battery on it. Oil was changed uh, about 500 miles ago, same time I did the sprockets and everything. Valves were checked. New valve gasket here was put in when I checked the valves. Carburetor was cleaned um, a couple days ago, same time I got the battery. Uh, it wasn't running quite right, so I took the carburetor apart, cleaned it, put it back together. Uh, it runs super smooth now. Give a quick overlook here of the front. Again, it's got one rear view mirror here. It has a place for another one, um, but I took it off. I don't use it, and I think it's gone. I don't even know that I've got it available anymore. So, uh, But you can put another mirror here if you want to get the, the breakaway style mirrors or something or another. They just bolt right in. And again, it's got the, uh, the Bark Buster type protections here to protect the levers uh, aftermarket hand grips um, let's see the miles we'll give it a crank up here let me show the miles and it has if you can see that uh, let me get to the miles there we go 15,396 miles 15,396 miles on it and so let's give it a crank up it is cold um, just to show you I'm grabbing the exhaust pipe here bone cold and normally the way I start this, I'll just give it a choke. We have it on. We have it in run. Crank out of Signal lights are working here. Back. Signal lights. And in the back. I'll be moving. I'll be moving. I'll be moving. There you go. Quick walk around. Um, so I'll show you a couple of things that are, um, I'll call them a little bit of discrepancies, if you will. Uh, there's a spot here on the seat. This was like this when I bought the bike, and it's starting to get a little bit of cracking here. And again, that was all like that when I bought the bike. I've had the bike about five years or so. Um, never bothered me because I only rode one up with it. Um, so that's what it is. A uh, little bit of barking here, it's kind of hard to see, just from typical dual sport riding, single track stuff through ATV paths, through the woods, etc. A uh, little bit of scuffing right there, if you can see it, again, just through the woods, going out some rock trails, 
and stuff and pretty good barking here from where I had a had a little bit of a spill down a I call it a goat path that was pretty hilly and pretty rocky in, in the south, southwestern Virginia mountains a couple of years ago. Um, but no damage, it's just all cosmetic with this little plastic piece here. You can see nothing here was dent or broken or anything like that. Um, one little, well, a couple little scratches here on the tank here and here, and a little bark right there. Let's see, let's see. A little skint spot right there. Not too bad, and that's probably just from where the fork hit it here on a super tight turn or something or another like that. And again, this, this spot here that I mentioned, again, it's not broken. It still holds. It's just discolored. Um, a little bit of barking here on, uh, on the engine cover. Again, it's nothing but cosmetics. There's no big gouges or anything. It's just discoloration just from taking a rock or a, a tree limb or something or another down a path. Here. And a little bit here on this side as well. Not not as bad. I mean, just again, it's all a super cosmetic. Typical oxidation type stuff you'll see on a bike that's 20 years old. But again, this is just where the paint or whatever they put on these cylinder fins is, is starting to flake off. Overall, the bike's in super great shape. Um, as mentioned, brand new battery as of April 5th or 6th of 2022. Carburetor was cleaned on the same date. The tank was cleaned and flushed on that same date because it had been setting up for a little while and I wanted to get out all that old gas and, uh, and get it running really good and you saw it cranked up perfectly. All that's been gone through. Um, bikes probably as clean as you'll see any dual sport. Uh, overall, a really good bike. I have enjoyed it. I just don't ride it enough to justify keeping it anymore. It is a super fun bike to ride. It's super lightweight. Um, I think dry is 285 pounds or something or another. It's got a two gallon tank, I think. Um, 75 or 80 miles to the gallon. Uh, it'll do 70 miles an hour on the highway. Um, I wouldn't suggest it because the bike does get kind of windy and windy and buzzy when you're going that fast, but if you use it for a, a commuter bike or something in town, it, it goes great. I mean, city speeds are super nimble. You can turn around inside of a parking lot, parking space almost. It's such a short frame, but a great bike. I have super enjoyed it. Just again, don't go. I don't ride it enough to justify keeping it. So it's looking for a new home and a new owner. We'll just do another walk around here. I'll, uh, I'll stop talking so you can get some looks. And last but not least, I had mentioned I had some of the stock items, foot pegs, uh, handrails, front fender, anything that I took off the bike, I still have it. It'll come with the sale. Uh, the slime air compressor that I showed in here, we'll negotiate on that. The stock tools are in here. The tire irons and, and stuff like that that I have in here, we'll, we'll talk about that. The tubes will come with the sale. Brand new front tube and rear tube. I always kept them here in case I needed to do a field repair, and I have had to do that before. Um, I kept those in here, patch kit, etc. Um, but most everything that, that you see here come, is going to come with the bike, all but maybe just a couple of things in here uh, that I want to keep um, just for the tube patching things. But, but we'll talk about it if you're, if you're interested. It's not, not going to lose a sale over a $10 tool by no means. Alrighty, I hope you enjoy this video and give you a little bit more information on the bike if you're interested. Um, my information will be on this video and uh, you probably got here from going to a, a website where I'm posting the bike for sale or Craigslist or ADV Rider or something to that effect. And uh, alright, thank you for viewing. Have a great day.